And now, CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood starts right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. I'm Paulo Alejandria. Our top story. A gruesome double homicide involving an instructor at Le Cordon Bleu College has stunned many in the local community. I spoke to Pasadena police and to one of CCN's very own, who was a friend of one of the victims, about the tragedy. Just after 6 a.m., Monday, October 13th, Pasadena police received a call about a domestic assault in progress. When police responded to the call, placed at this apartment building on the 200 block of Madison Avenue, they found the caller, 50-year-old Lawrence Bressler, a chef's instructor at Le Cordon Bleu College, and his wife, Denise K. Bressler, dead from apparent multiple stab wounds. The suspect, 29-year-old Jacob Mallory Burson, Lawrence Bressler's nephew and roommate, was found shortly after police arrived, one block from the crime scene. Lieutenant Tracy Ibarra of the Pasadena Police Department says Burson did not put up a fight when police placed him under arrest. When he was contacted by law enforcement officers just south of the apartment building, he was cooperative. He was he had um, blood on him, um, undetermined if that was his blood because he had a slight injury or if it was the victim's blood. And he, we were able to handcuff him uh, without incident and then he was transported to the local area hospital. News of the apparent murder of Lawrence Bressler and his wife Denise sent shockwaves to the instructors and students who knew him at Le Cordon Bleu in Pasadena. CCN's chef Dave Matthews says he had known Bressler for a year and a half and shared a special bond with him. Chef Bressler was a mentor to me and I actually met him at an event, that we, a volunteer event that I did in Santa Monica. And we started a conversation that turned into a friendship. Uh, and he actually helped me um, develop myself as the chef I am today. Lieutenant Ibarra says there's no previous reported incidents involving the Bresslers and suspect Burson. Lieutenant Ibarra says Burson just recently moved to Pasadena from Florida and initial investigations into his past showed no prior criminal history. We did check him in the FBI database for and that's a database that gathers arrest history on a national level and there was no arrest history for him. Chef Matthew says Chef Bresler was a beloved instructor at Le Cordon Bleu for the past 11 years and was appreciated for the genuine care and concern he showed his students. Chef Matthew says he was at Le Cordon Bleu when he received news of Lawrence and Denise Bresler's tragic death. The school told us uh, we got received an email that it had happened and then I, a chef instructor had actually pulled me aside to talk to me about it um, and I was in shock because I had just talked to him on Saturday. The suspect, Jacob Mallory Burson, was scheduled to be formally arraigned this past Wednesday, but was declared a no-show after failing to appear before the court. Lieutenant Tracy Ibarra of the PPD says medical reasons were cited as the reason for his absence. There is no word yet on when he is scheduled to appear in court again. Facebook just launched a new app called Facebook Safety Check in response to the great earthquake and tsunami that happened in Japan as a way to, for people to check in with their family and friends. Here in the San Gabriel Valley, we prepared for the big one with the Great American Shakeout. CCN's Tony Mead visited a local school where students prepared for a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. More than 25 million worldwide and 10 million people in California will participate this morning in an earthquake drill. I'm here at Pasadena Christian School and they would demonstrate how they are ready. You guys going to be ready? Yeah. At 10.16 a.m., the bell rings. Pasadena Christian School is one of many schools participating in the drop, cover, and hold procedure. The school's appointed triage director, Diane Evans, says simulating what to do during a disaster situation and performing actual earthquake scenarios makes the children more prepared. The goal is to train not only our students so they know exactly how to handle the situation and not be afraid, and the staff so that we can think of as many scenarios as possible to keep our children safe. Pasadena Christian School has been perfecting the school's earthquake procedures for several years. Every year they add on to their emergency response procedures. They have displayed caution signs around certain areas of the school in case a tree or building collapses. Children are lined up and they quietly walk in a single line. The preschools are linked together to keep them safe. They also developed a triage center, fully stocked with first aid supplies, where depending on the injury, students and staff report to either a green, yellow, or red mat. Vicki Melly, the Emerging Needs Coordinator, says her staff is well trained before school starts. We bring in the fire department and they walk us through emergency drills. And we have a nurse who is trained in first aid who um, trains us and we actually have hands-on exercises. 
PCS has been educating students for the past 68 years. The students and staff all appreciate participating in this annual event. And for some, it's their first or second year. I feel much more prepared after going through it last year and then again this year. So I feel a lot more calm about facing um, a practice and a real earthquake. To learn more about the drill, visit shakeout.org. In Pasadena, Tony Mead, CCN. The two main candidates in the California Secretary of State's office race appear to be Alex Padilla, a Democrat, and Pete Peterson, a Republican. We'll invite Padilla for an interview, but we caught up with his Republican challenger during a recent fundraising event. Peterson was, our, was in our neck of the woods recently at a local Pasadena club talking with Republicans about why he feels he's the best person for the job. Peterson he's received endorsements from both Republicans and Democrats. He says current Secretary of State Deborah Bowen ought to show up for work. The main issues he's focusing on include transparency, technology, and taxes. I've known for several years uh, that Secretary Bowen has not been reporting regularly to the office in Sacramento. I didn't know what the reason was. But when the LA Times reported that she was suffering from what she called debilitating depression, it started to make at least a little bit more sense. Uh, as far as reporting it, I think the Secretary of State, as with all government officials, should show up for work. And one of the things I pledge to do is put my calendar, my work calendar, up online if I'm fortunate enough to be elected Secretary of State, because the people who essentially pay my salary should know what I'm doing. And for whatever the reason, uh, the Secretary of State's office has not been performing well. And that has always been my top priority. And my reason really for running is I think the office could be doing sh so much more. And uh, I'm pledged again, not only for this run for Secretary of State, but also to run only for re-election to the Secretary of State office, because I believe this is a two-term project. Uh, so really, if no, if, if someone from, yeah. if if all the if all the powers that be are yeah. saying, come on, Pete, run no. for, you're you're just not going to do it. No, no, I'm not. I mean, I, I think I've really, tr hope hopefully made my case that this is my dream job, right? And after eight years. Well, then we see what happens. So I think the Secretary of State obviously has a lot of work to do in the area of business engagement. A lot of business owners have to register their business with the Secretary of State and file a lot of different paperwork. They also have to file that uh, ridiculous $800 a year business franchise tax. And what I've pledged to do is bring transparency to where that money goes. Uh, my wife happens to be an LLC owner and she has to write out that check. And even doing some research at Pepperdine, we haven't been able to find out where that money goes. So one of my first tasks as Secretary of State is to bring some transparency as to where that money goes to. And technology is all well and good, but it sounds like there's people in um, the state of California that are still pretty uh, skeptical about um, uh, what to do with the voting technology, et cetera. Yeah, so technology really cuts in a couple different directions. Number one, California ranks in the bottom five states in the use of technology to inform voters. So other states are very good at, uh, say, on your handheld device, you can download an application to find out where your nearest polling place is. Those kinds of tools are not available yet on a statewide basis in California. That's definitely something I'm going to look to bring here. Also, voting technology in the voting booth is something that we definitely need to improve upon. The 25th annual Methodist, Arcadia Methodist Hospital Crystal Ball event took place this past week in, Pas in the Pasadena Convention Center, where hundreds came out to raise money for the rehabilitation unit of Methodist Hospital. 900 people filled the exhibit hall of the convention center. The event honored Supervisor Michael Antonovich and his wife Christine. A full auction took place inside the convention center, while a silent auction happened just outside the doors. Following dinner, guests heard the legendary Paul Ankus sing some classics. <laughs> Chairman of Foundation, we're very excited about the money we're going to raise for the Cardiac Council, for the rehab unit, I should say. Just want to say thanks to all those folks who came out tonight to support us and to encourage the community at large to understand that great health care is only possible with great community support. Coming up, Urban Game Changer Shirley Hussar talks Ebola and some possible changes in the Catholic Church. We'll be right back. Today we're moving into a new house. Mom and Dad got a home loan at the credit union. 
Mom says they helped us pay for our cars too. Mom and Dad use Pasadena Federal Credit Union cards to buy little things too. Dad says PSCU provides one-stop shopping and good interest rates. I don't know what that means, but it must be interesting. I'm just happy my sister and I each get our own bedrooms now. It's great that PFCU helps people buy things they need. Thanks for making our dreams come true, Pasadena Federal Credit Union. And now, CCN Brown City News. Your news, your neighborhood starts right now. The word is causing fear and panic for many people, not to mention the messy response to it here in the U.S. We wanted to hear what some of you had to say about this deadly viral outbreak. So we sent CCN's Andy Rocco out there to get your reaction. What are people saying, Andy? Hi, Paulo. Reaction to these first few U.S. cases of Ebola has been mixed. Some say the president and his administration and the CDC are doing a good job in dealing with it. Others say heads should roll. Take a look. I think we're doing the right thing as far as being uh, it being here in our country, which is dangerous, but now we can really dig into it. They should have closed borders. No, they've totally messed it up. Well, I think they should have equipped the hospitals and the staff, the medical staff, also the airlines and the, and the, and the um, staff from the airlines because they don't know how to deal with that and they haven't done that. And so I think it's going to be a more widespread than what they originally thought. Uh, I think it's terrifying that it is, exists and that it uh, seems to be spreading. Um, I don't think that in the States it's actually that massive a risk. I think when I, when I speak about it being scary and be spreading, I'm talking globally. Um, but I also have confidence that our CDC, our Center for Disease Control, will be able to keep it in check. I think everybody, they're taking care of it. Uh, I think people are getting a little bit paranoid. They probably need to make some adjustments, but I think they know that. I really think that they're trying, but I don't think they're doing enough. One thing is for sure, everyone's pretty much aware of how deadly the disease is. And the question now is whether officials are doing enough to stop Ebola from spreading. Lots of different opinions out there, Paulo. Yeah, it seems like everybody has something to say about Ebola. It definitely is a hot button topic of the day. It absolutely is. Thank you. All right. Excellent, Andy. Thank you very much for that report. Speaking of Ebola, that was also a hot topic on CCN Sunrise set earlier today when urban game changer Shirley Hussard discussed the issue with Sunita Joshua Madison and guest co-host Mary Winters. The three also discussed potential changes in some Catholic church policies. So everyone's blaming everyone with this Ebola. I don't even know if I should say a crisis considering there's only been one death in the U.S. so far, which is far off from the crisis when you talk about deaths from other diseases or getting hit by a car walking down the street. Now, surely everyone's blaming everyone. Who do you think's to blame here? You know, I think that we as citizens, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm so excited. I love the new studio. You ladies look fabulous. Thank as you, you should, thank of course, you. all right. We have all us. ladies here <laughs> today. <laughs> you know, Ebola is a very interesting scenario because it is a disease that is rapidly moving. Uh, we live in times with all the illegal immigrants coming into this country. Uh, we have concerns about people interacting in our in a way that we that can we can't control the disease and we can't control how does outside entities coming in. How does illegal immigration play in here considering the case is coming from Africa, not not Mexico it is seems where like we're every case comes from Africa. That's what I always find interesting. Like no other country has diseases but Africa. Uh, well, no, well this 
case. I mean, when we're talking I, I, about I, Ebola specifically. I understand, I understand, but I think that's the scare that we have when we talk about Ebola, when we talk about how it affects our country, the people are scared. I think that we have to stay calm. So I, I think mm -hmm. the people who are in charge are doing what they can, but that we do need to be informed. We need and to be we, informed and we, and we need to be prepared. Our hospitals really need to have their systems. Well, look at Texas is showing than they, they are not now. prepared. Well, look how they were dressed, oh, the garment. Not. I mean, the fact that they, they put the gloves on, but they don't have the booties on for the shoes. Uh, we don't even have headgear that's properly right. uh, put in place. The protection, the patrol of that is not being governed and put into place at all. Well, right. I'm just so thankful that they're finally transferring those nurses. I, from the beginning with Thomas Duncan, I was like, get yes. him out of there. Yes. What are they and doing? Not just that, they're, they're bringing him everywhere. They're, they're, they've moved the nurse. They put her on a, on put a plane. Put her on a plane. But that's okay. Okay. In California. Oh, that. my God. No, they put her on a public, on a plane. No, 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 that, that was horrible. With her coming back. Yes. That was ridiculous. But you know what's interesting? I've seen some of them even interview people in garment. I'm like, why are you interviewing the people in the garment? The garment should be disposed of. Absolutely. Because all of whatever is on the germs, on the gloves, on the face mask. It's just oh, my God. It's getting everywhere. It's getting it's, everywhere. It's getting everywhere. Well, uh, next topic, there are big shifts brewing in the Catholic Church. Pope Francis has been signaling that he wants the church to be more inclusive with uh, gay people and divorced parishioners. And some bishops are august. Okay. August. Oh, oh my God. This well, is a very, very controversial issue. May not be any it? different than after Vatican II, right? Uh, I don't really support this at all. I think that if you're going to be tradition, if you're going to stand for a principle and a values, which the Catholic Church has done for a long time, a long, long time, why all of a sudden change those rules well, and see, regulations? I have an issue with, um, with adults not being able to receive communion who have been divorced. Maybe the, the spouse actually walked out on the other married person, and so then they are not allowed to receive com communion. I, I know, but I don't think issue. this is a political issue. I think when it comes to beliefs, and religion, and when they talk about the values well, of what, what but hold it's on, really what, what, doctrine let, in let the me finish. So when we talk about. about values of where a, a, a institution, as I call institution or religion, uh, as the Catholic Church has had for a long time, you set those standards and guidelines for a reason. Well, but Why we, used do we, have, have we used to have Latin masses. We used to have the priest face our face well, us. We well, would watch his back during well, mass. We Jesus completely changed, changed things about, around. You know, yeah. uh, he was against premarital sex. He was against divorce. But he said, because of the hardness of your hearts, I allow this. I ex I understand that this is going to happen. Yeah. Even with, um, you know, there was a, a woman who was you caught said in that adultery. Jesus I, yeah, I would, I, not I, allowed, I but correctly. he accepted these people. He didn't I, say I, I, shun them. He didn't say oh, don't burn, let them have. I don't think that even Pope Francis that, says to not. I don't judge. think that the Catholic Church is saying shun them, and I don't think the traditional. Catholic is saying shun them. What we're saying, and I'm not Catholic, I'm a Christian, I'm a Judeo Christian, just to clarify what I stand for, but I do believe that people have beliefs and standards. And when those standards are in place, you have them for a reason. You know, if you start to alter them, you start altering the arrangements of everything else that's in line with it. I just think that, you know, we, we're calling for Islam to make changes in, uh, in their religion and make some reforms. We're saying, you know, your rules and your traditions are from the Stone Ages. And I think the same goes here. So a lot of these things are from the Stone Ages. There's a who shift are going we, on. Who are and we Pope to Francis. change the values of someone's beliefs? Well, no, I think everybody's this allowed country, to have their beliefs. I just think that this, the Judeo church values. But we're not talking about this country. Ships. We're talking about the church and their looking at Okay, well, if we look at the church of the Catholic Church, again, they have standards. They should stick to those standards. And I disagree with them. The fact I, of moving I forward agree and with the church the that, that looks at its parishioners and, and bases its rules on what's happening and what they're seeing. When we come back, he's the youngest candidate for state assembly, and Nathaniel Sy tells us why he's taking on Chris Holden. Next. Ability First's professional business services can meet your many key corporate needs. We serve the Los Angeles area, offering warehouse services, secure document shredding, and light industrial staffing. Ability First Business Services stands for quality service and competitive prices with a higher purpose. Ability First is a professional organization providing excellent services to Lowry's restaurants for more than five years. With your support, we'll continue to develop jobs for adults with disabilities in our communities. Call us for a quote today, 866-766-2006. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Your mom just had a heart attack, and the ER doctor asked if she has an advanced directive. Are you prepared? Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. He is the youngest candidate running for state assembly, but that didn't stop him from going after popular incoming Chris Holden. Nathan Sy spoke earlier with Sunita Joshua Madison and Mary Winters on CCN Sunrise. Thanks for being here, Nathan. So what made you take on the big man machine, Chris Holden? Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm a government major at, at, uh, government major at Claremont McKenna College, and my friend and I were actually looking for uh, internships to do this summer, working on political campaigns, because we wanted to get involved. And um, we saw that Chris Holden was actually unopposed. And between the two of us, we made you know, jokes and comments about running for office in the future. And I said, why not now? So um, we checked with uh, the local registrar, and we filed the papers uh, in March, and here I am. So what's your platform? What, do you, what are you really standing on? What's important to you? So I, I guess the three most important issues for me are, are one, the affir affirmative action, which is a, a big bill coming up in the State Assembly. Um, I believe the Senate, S Senate, bill, uh, Senate Constitutional Amendment 5 would like to bring back affirmative action into our public schools, uh, public education, and um, our public workforce. How do you think that will help? Um, I actually, I'm opposed to the affirmative action bill. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a band-aid solution for a socioeconomic problem that you know needs a more long-term solution. So, what would be your long-term solution if it's not affirmative action? I think providing it since I think I believe it's a socioeconomic problem. So, um, the reason that you know some people, some you know, uh, I believe rate. Uh, ethnicities are doing better than others is because you know they have certain advantages and, and um, they have more resources and I think if we provide those kind of resources you know tutoring after school tutoring college preparatory resources to those who are underprivileged you know it would even out the chances how do you think that will be paid for um, that's still something I'm trying to develop I'm still new to the whole you know uh, fiscal you know budget budgeting but uh, I think that we can you know divert money from other you know if we increase the efficiency of, of the state budget, then we can, we can find money. There's always, way to, there always, there always ways to find money. So. I'm sure people are asking you, like, how, you know, obviously you were saying I'm, I'm new to the process, and obviously for anyone, you know, there would be a lot to learn, but um, how seriously is this run for you? I mean, is this something that, that's just a challenge to say you could do it? I mean, you're, you're pretty well, well versed on the topics. Well, I mean, it's... Either way, you know, uh, win or lose, but my, my goal is to win, obviously, but my message is more, you know, to get the younger generation involved. And my main mission for this campaign for this entire, you know, past six months has been to get the younger generation involved. There are about 50,000 18 and 24 year olds in this district running from Pasadena all the way to Claremont down to 210, and, you know, less than half are registered to vote, and even fewer voted in the last election. And, you know, so every decision being made in state legislatures across the country and in Congress is going to have an impact on my generation the most. So but it's important that we, you know, we step it up and get, in, get involved. Absolutely. This is gutsy. I mean, this is brave <laughs> of you. How are you, you going to each individual and who do you think will be your, your biggest, your, your voter population? So, I mean, obviously the younger people, I'm, I'm reaching out to them. The um, ones who can vote, huh? Yes, yes. So. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I've been going to local colleges and local high schools and just basically saying, hey, you know, this is our chance to get involved. And, um, you know, with the, the projections of the midterm election turnouts, um, I really think that we have a chance as long as, you know, the people who really care about these issues, you know, come and step it out. I mean, we need to educate more people to, to come out and vote. All right. Well, thank you for so much for coming out here Absolutely. and talking to us and, and really inspiring the, the youth to get out there. Thank Good you luck. Good, Good luck to you. you. Uh -huh. A jolt of Joe with some healing properties when we come back. You just received a call from the hospital and found out that your mom fell and broke her hip. Are you prepared?
Today my bike got a flat tire. I should be sad, but I'm not, because six months ago, I went to Pasadena Federal Credit Union and emptied my piggy bank into their Coinstar machine. I put the money in my kids' club account, and they even gave me a Sammy Rabbit book to remind me to save my money. Dad says he and Mom can save money too in their new savings account. Now I have enough to pay for a new tire, and I still have money left over. It feels good to do things myself. Thank you, Pasadena Federal Credit Union. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Gustavo Gamba with Rushy Cafe in LA says Gano Excel Coffee can help heal arthritis and skin disease like vitiligo. He spoke earlier with Sunita Joshua Madison and Mary Winters on CCN Sunrise. So really, it can heal? I mean, I haven't heard of yeah, this before. Yeah, it's, yeah uh, basically, it's the uh, world's healthiest coffee. <clears throat> it's got Ganoderma lucidum in it. What basically it does is it goes into your immune system, and it gives your immune system a big boost. You know, it's an adapt adaptogen, you know, which basically adapts to your body. You mm -hmm. know, it, it works differently on different people because it's, you know, different people have different things. For me, it worked with my arthritis in my fingers. It helped me to balance my, uh, my high blood pressure and my diabetes. You so know. is it FDA approved for those yes, kinds of things? Yes, it's, it is for, um, for as, a, as a, like a coffee and a drink, yes. We, you know, I can't say it'll cure this or it'll cure that because everyone's different. So it makes so, you feel better. Yeah, it makes better. you feel better. It doesn't give you, the coffee doesn't give you that acidity mm -hmm. that you normally get with a regular cup of coffee and it also doesn't give you that two o'clock crash. You know, That's this my is, worst thing. I know. Is it grown in a special place? Yeah, or uh, basically it's grown in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the coffee is a hundred percent organic coffee. So it's it's organic. It's good for you, and it tastes great. But it also comes in like a hot chocolate, a tea, toothpaste that doesn't have the fluoride. Toothpaste. Yeah. So basically, because you oh. have a lot of your. Um, <laughs> A lot of the bacteria is in your mouth. Yes, it is. So the Ganoderma lucidum, the reshi, is also known in uh, Japanese, uh -huh. in Japan, that uh, it goes in there and it, it fights the bacteria that's in your mouth. You know? So how did you get into wanting yeah. to sell this? Well, my friend, um, this guy here, has that, um, the whiteness, the, you know. Oh, the, the Michael Jackson vitiligo, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, he's had that since he was a teenager. And he drank, this is about two years ago. And this picture where you can see it's all, he's getting his pigment back. Mm -hmm. You know, that was sure about four neck. months ago. And oh, it basically, so I yeah. I see, it was like all yeah, over Yeah, it was all neck. here around his eyebrow and Turn under his lips. Here. And this is, you know, about four months ago. Mm -hmm. So basically, it works different for different people. Well, we're ready know? to try it. I yeah, want to see how okay. it works for me. Well, this one, you wanted to try the, um, the hazelnut, yeah, which I is sure this did. one right here. Okay. Um, so it all comes with the creamer and all. Now, how does the creamer affect it? I mean, does okay. that, that sounds I, a little unhealthy. Yeah. Basically, they... it's uh, like the, the hazelnut. You got the three-in-one. Those come with a um, you know, non-dairy creamer mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and the sugar already in it. Okay? And, now, uh, can all you, you get do it without is, sugar if you don't? Yes, they have the classic. Okay. And, they, and without the Yeah, creamer. you just stir it. Yeah. You have it the classic, good. which is this one right here, which for people who are diabetic, it's perfect. Or people who want to do it, make their coffee the way they it's like tasty. it. You know? So you got the, just the coffee with the granoderma in it. I you feel know? healthier already. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> it's good. and you it got the good. tanka ali, which okay. is this one right here, which also has the tanka root and also the ginseng, which gives you that boost that you need, you know, when you're, when you're tired and stuff, if you work early in the mornings or if you work construction or something. You know, the Tanka Ali will give you that extra boost that you need. Now, have you, know? you talked to, like, doctors and stuff about um, 
about how this works? And uh, yeah, some doctors have. There, we actually have one doctor. Um, uh, oh, I forget his name. His name is Gustavo, doctor. too. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he. Uh, Those buddies, huh? Yeah, he likes this it. This is wonderful. I, I'm looking forward to trying more, and I, I fortunately don't have any ailments, but. And you have supplements, yes, too. Yes, we have supplements, which is just a gonodermal lucidum. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and and you're, this is a franchise that you're running, or? This is basically, it's, a, um, it's part, I'm a distributor for Gano Excel. Okay. You know. All right, well, thanks for being Very here, nice. Gus, and thanks for that pick-me-up. I, I didn't need it. Need it. Thank you. Back with a lot more in our second half hour. Demonstrators showed up to protest President Obama's visit to the San Gabriel Valley recently, and actress Amanda Bynes is in Pasadena, but not for a very good reason. Next. Ability First's professional business services can meet your many key corporate needs. We serve the Los Angeles area, offering warehouse services, secure document shredding, and light industrial staffing. Ability First Business Services stands for quality service and competitive prices with a higher purpose. Ability First is a professional organization providing excellent services to Lowry's restaurants for more than five years. With your support, we'll continue to develop jobs for adults with disabilities in our communities. Call us for a quote today, 866-766-2006. And now, CCN, Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood, starts right now. We're back with our second half hour of CCN, Crown City News, our top story. The president was in our neighborhood last week, but it wasn't all smiles from those who came out to see him. President Obama visited the San Gabriel Valley last week to declare a portion of the San Gabriel Mountains a national monument. The president arrived at Frank G. Benelli Park in San Dimas early afternoon, October 9th, to sign the proclamation. When he arrived, the president was greeted by hundreds of demonstrators, both for and against the designation. Many who came to Benelli Park last Friday were vocal about the reasons why they supported or opposed the designation. This designation is uh, incredibly important to me because I spent an enormous amount of time over here. Um, I like to go hiking, I like to enjoy the outdoors, I like the fact that it's preserved. It's a natural wonderland and it's so close to Los Angeles and all parts uh, in between. And I think it's very important that it's protected. Well actually it's not going to bring funds to the mountains, that's just a uh, cover up. What, is, what they're after is the resource here and that's the water. The water, because once they got the water, they got the people. Reports show that troubled celebrity Amanda Bynes was taken to a Pasadena hospital on a 5150 hold, which allows for involuntary hospitalization for 72 hours and up to two weeks if someone is a danger to themselves or others. Bynes was reportedly picked up from LAX where she thought she was going to a business meeting, but, but instead her parents arranged to have her taken to the hospital. Her stay was extended to two weeks following erratic behavior, including accusing her father of sexually abusing her. She later recanted, posting on Twitter, my dad never did those things to me. The microchip in my brain made me say those things, but he's the one that ordered them to microchip me. Bynes was also arrested for DUI in late September. The 2014 Taste of South Lake showcased flavors you'll only find south of Colorado Boulevard. It took place October 12th. Presented by the South Lake Business Association, Taste of South Lake brought out many in the Pasadena community for a free event to all Many, to many restaurants and local businesses on South Lake Avenue. Some local participants included Celestino's Ristorante and Bar, Dry Bar, Pie and Burger, Wahoo's Fish Tacos, Jamba Juice, Dental Plus, and many others. Taste of South Lake offered live performances by artists and also cooking demos from some of the restaurant participants. They also welcomed guests into, the, into their beer and wine garden to enjoy their time meeting and greeting. An LA County prosecutor wants to punish the parents of a kid who brought a gun to school. More on that coming up. Today we're moving into a new house. Mom and Dad got a home loan at the credit union. Mom says they helped us pay for our cars too. Mom and Dad use Pasadena Federal Credit Union cards to buy little things too. Dad says PSCU provides one-stop shopping and good interest rates. I don't know what that means, but it must be interesting. I'm just happy my sister and I each get our own bedrooms now. It's great that PFCU helps people buy things they need. Thanks for making our dreams come true, Pasadena Federal Credit Union.
Your mom just had a heart attack and the ER doctor asked if she has an advanced directive. Are you prepared? They're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And now, CCN Brown City News. Your news, your neighborhood starts right now. Urban game changer Shirley Hussar is back in the CCN Buzz. She spoke earlier on CCN Sunrise with Sunita Joshua Madison and Mary Winters about whether parents should be punished when their kid brings a gun to school. They also discussed PCC's payment to commencement speaker Dustin Lawrence Black. Take a look. Our first story, an L.A. County prosecutor is going after a mother in Highland Park after her son brought a gun to his school in Van Nuys. This, one is, this is one of the first times they've gone after a parent, although in other school shootings, kids brought guns as well. And I'm kind of shocked that they haven't gone after parents before. Well, you know, I have to agree with you on that. I know, it's a little shocking. Doesn't little happen shocking. often. <laughs> the word school and gun. They just don't sound too good together. School and gun just don't sound good together. Yeah. And the fact that they would allow this. Now, maybe even, what was it, a show and tell? What was the purpose well, of it? It was a minor, too. Well, so, I mean, that's why I see the parent being involved. Well, they had said that the, just recently he'd had kind of some kind of, you know, fight with a boy or, he you did. know. Look, take, taking the premise of the urban communities, that's why I created Urban Game Changers. Think about the fact that right now, young African American, even Latinos, are being um, um, attacked with guns from the police, police guns gun and youth, school, all those words do not go together. And I'm sorry, the parents should know better. The parents should be the more responsible one. We've had these problems before in the past where parents have not been held accountable or legally accountable. And I think that, you know, some, some, something needs to be put in place well, right now. Well, it gives a bad name to people who are responsible with yes, the guns, too. absolutely. But you know absolutely. what? I don't understand. I mean, I understand that, you know, the gun, this, this mom was not cooperative, and I think that's kind of what less yeah. led to her arrest. Also, they went to her home, and the guns were kind of everywhere. Oh, very she had no oh, safety mechanisms on them. It was crazy. Um, Come on now. But I kind of wonder. I mean, anybody has a walk in. If you had a gun in your house, and if you're you're doing it for safety's sake, you know, if you have it sealed off in an upper attic and the ammo somewhere else, how are how are you going to protect yourself if, if if they're not easy access? So I do think there's a little bit of a you know a tough call for people who are going to. But if we go back owners. to the subject matter, why she, why she was arrested? She was arrested because of the fact that her child who came to school with a gun. And, and it was freely accessible to him without locks. It was absolutely. open. Ammunition was available. Absolutely. It was but now the NRA, you know, after Sandy Hook, they they said they wanted more guns in school. They wanted that's what was going to keep everyone. You know what? Safe. I, I I think safety comes with responsibility. Absolutely. All right. Well, that, that's a great point. Next story: more fallout from the commencement speech debacle at Pasadena City College. You remember back in May that PCC had invited screenwriter Dustin Lance Black 
only to disinvite him after someone posted naked pictures of him. Then they invited then Director of Public Health, Dr. Eric Walsh, only to have him disinvite himself after a sermon surfaced online of him making inflammatory remarks about gays and Catholics and Oprah and your mama, just about everyone. Uh, <laughs> he resigned from his job as well. And then PCC finally invited Dustin Lance Black back again, back in black, but really in the red because back, Black said he had incurred expenses from the original disinvent, disinvent, invitation. I can't even keep this story it's straight. Confusing. It was crazy. So PCC finally paid him off, and not everyone thinks that's a rosy picture right there. Well, you know, PCC sounds like a soap opera with this going back and forth from one man to another man. There is they, no perfect They people. should have picked a woman. I mean, honestly, oh, they, they do. do. They do. Exactly. Exactly. Ladies, right? They rule the world. They do. Exactly. We wouldn't have had an issue then. But, uh, but on the note of the subject matter, keep in mind that, I mean, come on. You know no one's perfect in this world. They should have stuck with, the, with their guns and went with the person they had at the very beginning. Lance would have been the one. Stick with Lance. Now there's rumors that the money that he got for speaking, was a part of a compensation because of the amount of it was, what, $26,000? That's uh, a lot of expenses. That was you know, very do you, large. Do you have a lot of wild women or wild men? I don't know what was going on in that room. Well, his you know, entourage came obviously, in. His entourage you know, was large. He's, so, he's flying you know, first very, very class large. and things like that. But, you know, I'm surprised that, you know, if he was finally invited to speak, you know, bygones. Like, why still pay him this money? He, he got I to speak I think they put soon. a contract together, and they need to follow through on a contract. Well, they I screwed think up that's the first happened. time. That's the bottom yeah. line. But to keep in mind, if they ever do it again, PCC, if you ever do it again, keep in mind, stick with your guns. Go with yes. the first person. Forget about the past. Live with the now. There you go. Shirley has it. Thanks for being here, Shirley. And Thank you so much you for having me. you're always welcome really back. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love you guys here. This early in the morning. We'll yes, have to get you Absolutely. Up. All right. <laughs> When someone is going through a difficult time, it can be tough to comfort them. Dr. Michelle Meyer helps us figure out the right thing to say in the Family Family segment, next. Today my bike got a flat tire. I should be sad, but I'm not, because six months ago, I went to Pasadena Federal Credit Union and emptied my piggy bank into their Coinstar machine. I put the money in my kid's club account, and they even gave me a Sammy Rabbit book to remind me to save my money. Dad says he and Mom can save money too in their new savings account. Now I have enough to pay for a new tire, and I still have money left over. It feels good to do things myself. Thank you, Pasadena Federal Credit Union. You just received a call from the hospital and found out that your mom fell and broke her hip. Are you prepared? If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything buzzed busted and broke because buzz driving is drunk driving you wouldn't let money just blow out of your house so when your ac or heater is on make sure the doors windows and fireplace flue are shut tight if you're headed out turn down the ac or lower the heat by 10 degrees and always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Hey everybody! Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. <laughs> Got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. 
Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We've all tried to comfort people going through difficult times, and it's not always easy to know if you're saying the right thing when someone experiences a death or illness in the family. CCN segment star Michelle Meyer talked about it earlier with Sunita Joshua Madison and Mary Winters on CCN Sunrise. It's so easy to feel that everyone you're, that every, everything you're saying is just the wrong thing. So it's true. And I think, you know, Mary, in our professional lives, it's easier. But in our personal lives, it's a lot harder to say the right thing to people because what is the right thing? You know, we've all been there. We have, a, we have an individual in our life who's experiencing a significant event. And we don't know what to say. And so we end up saying the wrong thing. And it's not because we're trying to be malicious, is that there are those sensitive topics that we don't feel comfortable with, that when they come up, we don't really know how to respond to them. So there are a few things that we can do for our loved ones and our close friends. First thing, think before you even open your mouth, think about what you're saying. Is what you're saying, to, are you saying it to comfort the person or are you saying it to comfort yourself? The second thing, don't give anecdotal suggestions or advice. Oh, I would do this, or if I was in your situation, I would do this. A lot of times, if people are going through an event, it's very personal to them, and they might not want to hear that. Another thing is unsolicited advice. Um, I cannot stress enough that unless someone asks you for advice, do not to give them advice. You know, the, another thing is that a lot of times in our society, we, place, we gauge how someone's doing based on their physical appearance. And we say, oh, you look great, or you look tired. And a lot of times, people don't want to hear that. You know, they just, it, it's difficult for them because they might not be feeling what you're saying. You know, and lastly, I always tell people, you know, I, I understand I am also a very positive person. I think it's important. But don't say, oh, things are going to get better. Everything is going to be great when you really don't know that. So what we can really do, and the best thing we can do is we can listen to people, we can be there, we can provide support and comfort, and at the end of the day, all people in most situations really want is they want a friend to listen to them. You don't have to say anything in return, but really listen to what they have to say and what they're experiencing, and let them know that you are going to be there for them. Yes. So Mary, you know, you know, you work with older adults, and a lot of this comes up with caregivers it's and true. conservators. Absolutely. And we don't know what to say. Right. And we want to make everything right. That we have, and it, it's very hard, especially when it's your own family. It's Absolutely. Hard, really. And yes. I've broken all the rules, I think, because mm -hmm. I've done all those things Absolutely. that I shouldn't have been doing. Because you were, because we, we feel like we need to compliment someone when they're experiencing something, because we it makes us feel better because we don't know what to do with it. So let me try to relate to you, but you really can't relate to yes. someone's individual experience. Absolutely. Thanks so much for those. That really helps a lot. Yes. The Mad Chef Dave Matthews is back and he's got some special guests with him. They'll show us how to make delicious Vietnamese spring and summer rolls and a taste of sunrise next. to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Uh, Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay. But remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. 
The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. The Mad Chef Dave Matthews brought in a couple of special guests to show us how to make spring and summer rolls. Sunita Joshua Madison and Mary Winters jumped in on the action earlier on CCN Sunrise. They made these rolls for the Imperial family in Vietnam, so you know they will be amazing. Hi, Dave. Hello. And, um, your guests. We have Lisa. So we have Lisa and Dow, yeah. and yeah. I hope you guys brought your passports today because we're going to Vietnam. And this is my gem of the Fountain Valley. It is an amazing restaurant, so I want to get right into it. But let's get started on these spring rolls and talk about how to make them and what's in them, and let's talk about your restaurant. All right. So our restaurant, is uh, the, the name is Hue Ơi. Right. And so Hue is, is really the old imperial capital city of Vietnam. So um, the, the dishes there are extremely exquisite because it's, it's really made for the royalty and, and the kings and queens of Vietnam back okay. in the day. And so what's awesome is that, um, you know, uh, we, uh, we're able to uh, display and showcase and then have so everyone have these um, exqui exquisite dishes. So she's chopping it really finely. So we're finely chopping this to make these yeah. beautiful spring and summer rolls. So and it looks, smells like there's mint in that too. There is. Okay. There actually is mint. There's. It's. It's actually a little jewel. When you get to make this, you're going to love this. We're going to actually have you start the process okay. of the right, making the spring and the summer <laughs> roll. You trust me with a knife. We <laughs> do trust you with a knife. Right. Should we okay. not? <laughs> so here we go. So this is the um, the paper that the you, rice paper. The rice paper yeah. to make it. She's actually soaking it so that it. It gets Softens pliable. Yeah. Is that Great something gadget. you can find in a restaurant? Yeah, you mean in a I supermarket? I mean, sorry. Yeah, yes, in a supermarket, sorry. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Most Asian supermarkets will have that. Okay. Even some, like, Vons carries it, too, Oh, yeah, as now well. they do, I'm sure. So, so she's actually starting it. So she makes shrimp, and what I found really interesting is how they make their shrimp, because a lot of people don't understand how to make shrimp, like, because it's so complicated. Um, so you have to clean it and all that. They actually boil the shrimp first, and then they clean it and take the vein out and then cut it. And it's such an easy, simple process. Yeah, I noticed it's cut in half. It's that looks beautiful. Delicious too. So she's now layering. So Lisa, what do you have on here? So so far you've done the shrimp. Yeah, shrimp. You've done so that's and a pork and slap. This, and this is the summer. This yeah. is the, the spring roll. This is the spring roll. This is the spring roll. Okay. Spring roll, not spring, summer roll. Spring, spring roll. Okay. Yeah. So I hope you're watching. Okay, one right side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is where I might get messed up. Okay, I mean, she's feel. gonna have her own. Okay. I can't wait. So this is the well, demonstration. I can't wait to try their. Yeah. Can I? Okay. Yes. You, you can. Oh, oh, okay. So now now, oh, now you want me to? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I think yeah. I can do this. All right. Okay. Only because Lisa made it yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. This time. There you go. Look at that. I did it. Thank you. Look at. Look. Look. It's a professional. Spring roll with the. All right. So they serve their spring roll. They have two different sauces. We have a fish sauce that is phenomenal, and then this is a. For the spring roll. For the summer roll. That's a special peanut sauce. And it goes with the spring roll. Yeah. The fish sauce fish actually sauce? goes with the, the summer rolls that we're, we're going to okay. do right now. So we're yeah. going to have Mary make the summer roll. I've never roll. heard of summer rolls, so I'm really <laughs> yeah. excited about this. Do you so have this a fall and a winter roll? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we need to start not yet, thinking not about yet. that. So the, the idea is the spring rolls, it actually has uh, the shrimp and the, uh, the pork uh, and the vegetables, of course, as well as a vermicelli. So now the summer roll, you'll see uh, yeah. the grilled pork. Oh, it's a Hue style nice. grilled pork. And that also yeah. comes with... Uh, Wait till you try this grilled pork. So what is the secret on this grilled pork? Remember we talked about the oh, lemongrass? Yeah, there's a, a lot of people don't yes. use lemongrass. Lita, Lita. It's a lemongrass, yeah. uh, marinated yeah. uh, grilled pork yeah. uh, with yeah. sesame seeds. After the euro, okay. they yeah. soak. A little bit of uh, fish yeah. sauce as well as um, uh, honey a little bit too. So you marinated it. How yeah. long does it marinate? Um, Big Mama? Yeah. <laughs> How long are you marinating it for? Uh, I'm marinating uh, 30... Um, Half an hour? No, 
30 wow. hours? Yeah. 30 okay. hours. Sorry. 30 okay. hours, wow. 30, 30 hours. So, so uh, yeah. do you take Put notes take? when she's cooking, or, or you just I do the eating? I, I like to eat <laughs> and taste. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> well, you've got to try some of these oh, okay. these yeah, dishes perfect. here. So yeah. they use mustard greens mm -hmm. to make a lettuce wrap. So I want you to, to go ahead and try this with, okay. the, with the pork. So this is mustard greens. Oh, okay. This is mustard greens. Beautiful. Yeah. So you yeah. see yeah. carrots, um, and you can see. What is this? Yeah. That's the butter pork. Just pork? Yeah. A butter lettuce. Okay, so you have another one. Look how beautiful that's I'm coming along. Going. Boy, yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to try to make a own. lettuce wrap out okay. of this. Okay. This is their marinated yeah. pork. So what happens if I don't do the right combination of things? Okay. Does it turn into something else? Or? Okay, so let's well, talk about you your can marinated do a pork. Combination you, can, you'll you can call it your uh, own, okay. own roll. Uh, so we make it a merry roll? So is this the same pork over there? Yes. Yeah, same thing. It's for the... The, the so the way you eat this, is, it's almost like a lettuce wrap, oh, yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah. using mustard greens. There you go. Yeah. So it's more so like an appetizer. Like, yeah. These yeah. are and all uh, like a healthy little thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good for uh, no carbs. Um, <laughs> you, you know, if you eat a lot. Do we have? Powder. Okay. So so Low let's talk about the location of the restaurant. It's in Fountain Valley. A, uh, yeah. What's the address? A little bit. It's at one six five three seven Brookhurst Street in Fountain Valley. Okay. So and you guys are open. The only yeah. thing we're not open is Tuesdays. Yeah, we're closed Just Tuesdays. Okay. So it's a really great opportunity for everybody to go down and try this. It is spectacular. You know, let's just I talk about the that. last of the dishes that we have here. So this is an appetizer that I fell in love with. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you just briefly oh mention what the so name of it is. Yeah, this is exactly. another appetizer. Um, yeah. As you can you see, it's, it's, uh, oh, it's very, a very small portion, so it's fun to eat. Uh, yeah. It's called ban bao. And literally, ban means cake and bao means amazing, water fern. Amazing. I so said it's shaped like a water segment. fern. Amazing. This is yeah. a special dish that um, they created just for us for the TV show. Yeah. Um, and you can go into the restaurant and order it. It's yeah. all different it's types of pork on this plate, correct? Yeah. There's, so we've got there's sausage. Pork, there's uh, actually beef sausages. Beef sausage. Uh, there's also pr uh, pickled uh, cucumbers. Oh, right there. And there's um, roasted pork over there. Okay, last thing. I want to just talk about this device here. I fell in love <laughs> with this thing. So. This is from Vietnam, and it's actually a slicer and a peeler. So and a grater. Is, and grater a grater. Well. It does it all. So do you want to show us how to use it? Yeah. Real quick. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that amazing? That, I want so that. So it really this saves like, a lot of time. Oh, my goodness, one of those. Exactly. literally oh, saves a lot of time. amazing. Yeah. Well, that, you've shown us such amazing <laughs> things. I can't wait to come to the restaurant. I hope you'll help me okay. with the menu. And Bring your passport. Yeah. Exactly. Bring your passport. Yeah. Thank you so much really for being here. That's it for now. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors for supporting our show. Big thanks also to Urban Game Changer Shirley Hussar, Nathan Sai, and Gustavo Gamba for being here. Thanks also to our crew and especially to you out there for watching us. See you next time.